Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm going to be wrapping up the Death Wish franchise or the Death Wish series of reviews, whatever you want to call it. It's all Greek to me with Death Wish 5, The Face of Death, which is the final uh, one with Charles Bronson and also the final Death Wish movie in the original franchise. I had to do take two of this because I forgot to grab this laser disc uh, for this video, because I do have the movie on Blu-ray, but there does not have art for this one, which is weird because it's a double feature. But I always did like this poster, very cut and dry, very simple. Um, and uh, yeah, of course I have all the Death Wish movies on laser disc, but yeah. But I do like Death Wish 5. Um, it used to be my least favorite, but when I just rewatched these, I'm like, you know what? I kind of like this one more than the first one. You know, it's a nice little swan song, in my opinion. But yeah. But before I go any further, if anyone would like to help contrib contribute to the channel, if I could get my words out, that would be great. By sending in a paid request such as this. This is from Emily, again, who wanted me to talk about all the Death Wish movies. You may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big, no amount is too small. I know that is the uh, the biggest question that everyone always asks, or people say, you know, I can only contribute a dollar or whatever. Again, it is not a big deal. Whatever you guys want to contribute, it's fine. I am not doing this for the money. I have money. I have a job. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this for you guys so you guys can see more of the stuff that you want. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for you. But, and it does not have to be a movie review like this. It could be a TV series or a cartoon or a comic book or a video game or music, random thoughts and rants and streams and commentaries and anything in between. That's what it is set up for. So again, if you're interested, Send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try some different things. And it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win. Like I just said, you guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see, and I keep making them, and everybody's happy. So there you go. But Death Wish 5, again. Um, not only is this the last Death Wish movie with Charles Bronson, this is also Charles Br ugh, Charles Bronson's last movie to go to theaters. After this, he would only make three more movies, and that was the Family of Cops trilogy, which were made for CBS. They were made for TV, which I actually do like those movies. I have them back here somewhere on the top shelf on DVD because there's no Blu-rays for them yet. but. Yeah, this was kind of a nice little swan song, not only for Paul Kersey, but for Charles Bronson as well. Now, the plot is exactly the same as the other Death Wish movies, but that's okay. This time around, um, Paul Kersey's back in New York, even though they filmed it in Toronto. <laughs> and um, he is dating a fashion designer who was played by Leslie Ann Downed. Right? Yeah. Right there. And her ex-husband is a Irish mobster, Tommy O'Shea, played wonderfully by Michael Parks. May he rest in peace as well. And he, they have a daughter together and all this kind of stuff. And he's trying to cut into the profits. He's trying to get his end. And Olivia says no. Olivia is the name of, of Bronson's girlfriend in this movie. And he starts to intimidate her. He hires an assassin to mess her face up. And they agree to testify. Then they change their mind. And then she gets killed anyway. And then Bronson tries to do the right thing by going to the law. And it doesn't work. So he goes back to his old ways to take care of the problem. And that's it. And it, like again, the, the sequels, I mean, apart from Death Wish 4, which tweaked it a little bit, they're all the same. All the, the plots of these movies are the same. I know a lot of people bitch and complain about that, but I mean, what exactly did you want in a Death Wish sequel? Did you want Charles Bronson to 
go out in the country and you know have a potato farm and then one day one potato gets angry and then he has to kill the potatoes like that would be a different kind of death wish movie i don't really know what more people would want um did you want him to become like a navy seal or something like i don't know it's just they're simplistic and they're supposed to be simplistic and that's the way that i like them but I've always liked Death Wish 5. Again, like I said at the in the beginning of the video, up until now, I would have said that this is my least favorite. But my opinion has changed. I do like this one more than the first one. Mainly because they got really creative with the kills. I do like, and that was Charles Bronson's idea. He said from the beginning, he wanted to do something different. He didn't just want to run around and shoot everybody anymore. Because you have to remember, at this time, he was 72 years old. He was getting up there. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, God bless him. Because he was still making movies. He still wanted to make movies. But the believability, I understand. And I think he realized that, too. It's like, okay, people aren't going to buy me at 72 years old, running around, shooting everybody, and, and shotgunning them, and blowing them up. Like, people aren't going to believe that. So they got a little more creative. Now, you do have some of that. Like, Bronson definitely shoots people in this movie. So you have the traditional Death Wish type of kills. But they also got more innovative with the kills in this movie. And I like that. I like how they did something a little bit different. You know, it was nice. And again, that from the get-go, that was Bronson's idea. He wanted to do something different. So there you go. Now, of course, at this time, Canon Films was gone. Canon Films was no more. By 1994, when this movie came out, they were, they were gone. It was over. Now, when Menahem Golan and Yoram Globus split up, Menahem kept the rights to Death Wish. He still had the rights to, the, to do Death Wish. Now, before they split up, they wanted to do Death Wish 5 with, while at Canon, but it never happened. Like I said, there was a script where they were going to do Death Wish on Alcatraz. That never got made. That was written by the same guy that wrote Death Wish for Gail Morgan Hickman. So there you go. Um, but that never got made. So, you know, Bronson took a little bit of a break because Jill Ireland died, I think, right after he did Kinjite, which was his last movie for canon. So he took a break for a couple years. He did a lot of smaller roles. He was in... The Indian Runner, he had a small role in that movie. Unfortunately, he kills himself in that movie. You don't see it, but it, it, they tell you. He was in a little TV movie called Yes, Virginia, There's a Santa Claus, which is a remake, which he's actually quite good in that film. Um, he did another TV movie called The Sea Wolf, which I think was done for TNT with him and Christopher Reeve, which I have actually never seen. It only came out on... Well, there is a DVD of it, but it's overseas, but I've never watched the movie. And then Catherine Mary Stewart from Night of the Comet is in it as well. And then um, he did another TV movie. You're seeing a trend here. He started doing a lot of TV movies. He did one for CBS, which was called Dead to Rights with him and Dana Delaney, where he was back as a cop. And then he got the offer for Death Wish 5. Like I said, Menahem Golan had the rights to it, and they agreed. Uh, I think the price was pretty hefty for Bronson. I think the paycheck was pretty big, and they agreed to do another Death Wish movie. Now, there was a script, and then the script got completely changed, so I don't know how much of that is in this movie, but it got changed because of budget and stuff like that. And then. Um, Interestingly enough, I forgot to mention this for Death Wish 4, uh, Media Home Entertainment, who did, who ev actually eventually became uh, Anchor Bay, I believe, or they bought the name or something like that, they, um, they signed a deal with Canon for an advance so they could get the exclusive rights to Death Wish 4 on VHS, and Death Wish 4 actually was the highest grossing Death Wish movie on video. Back in the day. So it did very, very well in VHS. I completely forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. But also for this movie, uh, Trimark did the same thing. Trimark signed a deal to have the exclusive rights 
for a video on this. Um, yeah, or, well, it's it's Vidmark, but Trimark owned Vidmark. Vidmark was their home video branch, and then Trimark was the actual production company. So they signed an exclusive deal to get the rights to this. Now, it is kind of weird because I think that this came out on VHS right, like, as soon as it came out in theaters, I, I believe that was the case because this came out in theaters in January 94, and we will get more into that in a minute here, but I think it came out on VHS, like, right at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but again, we're going to get more into that there. So, but originally it was going to be a much bigger film, and then because the script, or the, the budget, rather, excuse me, kept shrinking, the script obviously kept shrinking. It's just unfortunately how it goes. And then it ended up becoming this little movie. Now, I think they were going to film in New York, but they changed it to Toronto because it's a lot cheaper to shoot there. And then there are rules where you have to hire a lot of local cast and crew members. So there's a lot of Canadian actors in this movie, which I'm not complaining. Um, but those are just rules and regulations that they have for that but there you go but i like i mean i like the location i think visually the movie looks nice i like the toronto location you know it's not bad now it was this was directed by alan goldstein who ended up he did a couple of uh brian bosworth movies a little bit later and he's done a lot of these kind of movies now originally and i think he did fine i know Charles Bronson got along with him. He actually, Charles Bronson wanted to make more movies with Alan Goldstein, but unfortunately it never happened. Um, he said, I don't want to do any more Death Wish movies, but why don't we work together again? And it just didn't happen. Now, they wanted Steve Carver originally. Now, Steve Carver directed Lone Wolf McQuaid and An Eye for an Eye with Chuck Norris, and he did a lot of other action movies back in the day. And... I He met with Bronson. Him and Bronson were kind of working on the script a little bit. They got along very well, and they were looking forward to working with each other. And then all of a sudden, Steve Carver got fired for no reason. Now, he said he thinks it's because the script change and the budget and stuff, but he doesn't really know why he got fired from the film. But it would have been cool because, again, I like Steve Carver as a director. I mean, Lone Wolf McQuaid is Lone Wolf McQuaid, so it would have been cool to see him do a Death Wish movie, but that did not happen. So they hired Alan Goldstein instead. Um, but again, good director. You know, some of the movies he did with Brian Bosworth, I like particularly Blackout. That was one of, I think, one of the better Brian Bosworth films. And I do like this. Again, visually it looks nice. I like the locations. It's edited very well. It looks like a theatrical film. You know, it looks pretty good in my opinion. And Bronson does fine. Again, you know, at this time, you know, Charles Bronson was not the same after Jill Ireland died. He loved that woman, you know, more than words can explain. When she died, you know, that was that was his biggest tragedy. Now, Charles Bronson, um, one of the reasons why I got into the Death Wish movies is because, well, Charles Bronson's fucking awesome. But I did a report on Charles Bronson when I was in school and, you know, learning about him and reading about him. He did not have a very good life. Uh, his childhood was particularly rough and it took him a while to get famous. And even then, you know, he was very reserved and quiet. And, you know, like I said, after Jill Ireland died, he wasn't the same. He was not. I think people that knew him will say that and Actually, people that know him have actually said that. So, yeah. And I think, you know, the last couple movies that he did, you know, he was, number one, he still wanted to do it. I don't think he, he was doing it for the money. He was actually pretty smart with his money. But he just wanted to work. He wanted to get out of the house and get his mind off of things and, you know. But I like his performance. You know, I love the last line that he says where they actually put the shot on the back here where he's walking away and he's like, hey, if you ever need any help, give me a call. And he just kind of walks out. It's like, ah, oh, man, we never got to see any more of that. But it's okay. It is what it is, I guess. But the rest of the cast is good. Leslie Ann Down, 
Uh, she was in a lot of stuff. She was in Beastmaster 3. I do remember that. And her and Charles Bronson were actually neighbors at one point. Um, they knew each other. I think her and Jill Ireland were pretty close before she died. And I don't know if that's how she got the part in the movie, but I'm sure that it helped. But I thought her and Bronson had chemistry. It would have been nice if she was in the movie a little bit longer, but it's a Death Wish movie, so I get it. But she does fine. Michael Parks. Oh, I was always a big fan of Michael Parks, whether it was this movie or The Hitman with Chuck Norris or From Dusk Till Dawn. I always enjoyed his work as an actor. Unfortunately, he's gone too. But Michael Parks is great as the villain. Um, I love, you know, whatever you need, just call me. I don't need anything but you need a bath. And then Bronson just throws him into this acid. Like, I mean, come on, that's a great death. It's, it's awesome. Um, some of the other actors in here, uh, Saul Rubinek is in the film. He plays the district attorney. I like him. He was in true romance. He's been in a lot of other stuff. He was in unforgiven with Clint Eastwood. Um, Ken Walsh is in it. He was in time cop. He was the Senator at the beginning. Uh, he, Canadian actor. He's in a lot of different stuff. Um, Miguel Sandoval is in the film. He was the bad guy in Clear and Present Danger. I like him in the film. Robert Joy is one of the bad guys. He was in Resurrection with Christopher Lambert. He's been in a lot of other stuff over the years as well. Maybe the Blu-ray has some more names. Um, it doesn't, actually. The guys that play all the goons, I like them. They were all fine. You know, a lot of good stuff. Look good, you know, good one line. Again, Charles Bronson, some I don't know, it's like the later Death Wish movies, the one liners got better. Because Death Wish 4 has a lot of good one liners. This one does. Hey Freddy, here's the cure for your dandruff problem. And then he blows up the dude. I mean, that's awesome. Um Hey buddy, you know, when he kills the guy with the cannoli, looks like you got a problem. But my favorite line from this movie, do guns make you nervous? Guns have their uses. Idiots with guns make me nervous. I completely agree, Charles Bronson. <laughs> completely, wholeheartedly agree with you on that one. Um, but the but the action and the kills again, they got more innovative. I mean, the first guy that he kills, he puts cyanide on his cannoli. Like that is badass. <laughs> and um. I mean, that was just really cool. It was it was innovative. Again, he kills a guy with an exploding soccer ball. That's really cool. You know, he wraps the dude in, like, saran wrap and then throws him out, and then all the other guys kill him. You know, he throws Michael Parks in basically acid at the end of the film. You know, it it's good. There's a lot of good stuff in this movie. You know, it's a good little, good little flick. I do, again, I do quite enjoy, again... When I first saw this movie, I this I think this was the last one that I saw. Because I didn't Death Wish 2, 3, and 4 I saw when I was in middle school, and then I had those. I actually had all those on DVD. And I would just watch them constantly. Death Wish 2, 3, and 4. Um Death Wish 1, I think I saw maybe. I think I caught it on cable or something, and then I found it on DVD. And then this one, I didn't see until I was in high school. I rented it from Blockbuster Online. Um, I had actually, no, 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 I had caught parts of it here and there because Showtime used to run this one a lot back in the day. And I used to catch like parts of it here and there, but I didn't see the whole thing until, you know, a little bit later. And when I first saw it, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's got some cool stuff. But over the years, I think this movie has grown on me because like I said, it used to be my least favorite, but now I like it more than the first one because it's a little more interesting with the kill sequences. You know, it's a nice swan song because, like I said, Bronson, this was his last movie that went to theaters, and then he did a couple of movies for cable, and then that was it. And then he retired, and then, unfortunately, he died. But it's got good stuff in it. You know, I always like this film. Now, when it came out in theaters, three day okay, so it only came out, I think, in L.A., so nobody saw it in theaters. And then three days after it came out, the, the the earthquake, the big Northridge earthquake happened. So do you really think people were going to the theater? I don't think so. 
So it didn't really make any money when it came out. And then, like I said, I believe it came out on VHS, like right at the same time. And because of the earthquake, so many tapes got destroyed, obviously. So they had to remake all the tapes and people didn't get them when they were supposed to. And unfortunately, it didn't really help the movie that much. So it, it didn't make any money in theaters. And then I think because of that, Bronson said he was not going to do anymore because he realized that, you know, people weren't really paying to see it anymore. Um, but again, when you have one of the worst earthquakes, <laughs> you know, happen three days after your movie comes out, I think that hurts the film. Just saying. And then also the fact that it only opened in L.A., I think, didn't help it either. So most people saw this on video back in the day. And I think it did well. You know, it sold well, but it took a while because, you know, a, a major disaster happened. And, of course, you have to take care of that before you can take care of your movie. It's just the way that it goes. Um, and then I know I, I, Bronson didn't like the way the movie turned out. I don't know what the reason for that was. And him and Menahem Golan were not speaking. So I don't know if old wounds opened up or new wounds opened or, or what happened, but they were not speaking to each other. And then this was the last movie that they ever did together. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, as a as a final entry in a series, I like it. Again, I like all the Death Wish movies. I really do. I have never disliked any of them. I think it's a good swan song. You know, do I think it's as good as 2, 3, and 4? No, but I still like it. There's some, again, I mean, you have a movie where Charles Bronson kills a guy with a poison cannoli and an exploding soccer ball. How can you not like that? I mean, it's pretty cool, in my opinion. But, I mean, yeah, this was kind of the last hurrah for him, you know. But, yeah, but we all miss Charles Bronson. I know I do. Now, this Blu-ray, again, I don't know why they didn't have, like, a, either a split artwork with Death Wish 5 or the reversible. I don't know why I didn't make the Blu-ray. But there is a commentary on here with Paul Talbot, who wrote a couple books about Charles Bronson, which I will grab those in a minute here. I forgot to get them. And then there's some minor stuff, like there's trailers and TV spots and, and that kind of thing. But the commentary, I haven't, excuse me, I have not listened to the commentaries yet. I need to do that. Um, and then, of course, I do have the laser disc so you guys can see the artwork. I also have this on VHS. I have all, I think I have all the, yeah, I do have all the Death Wish movies on VHS, obviously. I actually have multiple copies of some of them, but, oh, well. But at the end of the day, I... Actually, hold on. Before I forgot, the the guy that wrote the story, Michael Caleri, that's the guy that would go on to write Face Off. So there you go. Um, that's pretty cool. But at the end of the day, I do like Death Wish Five. It's a it's a good little finale to the saga. Um, and this was a lot of fun. Emily, thank you for sending in the the paid request. This was a lot of fun to talk about the Death Wish movies. Of course, I've seen these all a million times, so I didn't really need to watch them again, but it had been a while since I watched them, except Death Wish 3. I actually watched Death Wish 3 a couple months ago, but it was really cool to watch these again and talk about them. But before I go, I will do a little pause here, and I will show you a couple of really cool things related to Death Wish. Alright, as promised, I should have grabbed these before recording, but... Uh, there are two really good books about not only Charles Bronson, but Death Wish that's out there, which are these two. Um, this this is the first one. This is Bronson's Loose, the making of the Death Wish films. I got this, I was in middle school. I was in eighth grade, and I was doing a, a research report on Charles Bronson. We had to pick someone and do a research report. And I picked Charles Bronson. So you know how you need sources. So I bought this book. Actually, my mom bought this book. And uh, I love it. This is all about the Death Wish movies. It is really cool. If You need to get it. You need to get this book. Um, there's a introduction by Andrew Stevens. Of course, he was in 10 to Midnight with Charles Bronson. And then it goes through each of the film. Of course, Chapter 1 is the first movie. Um, a lot of really good interviews in here with people, um, you know, people that worked on the films. I'm trying to 
look in there. Here's like a picture of the Death Wish 2 soundtrack, which that is iconic in my opinion. Um, you know, a lot of really cool stuff in here. There's actually, hold on, it's in here somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, here's a picture of the Death Wish 3 video game box. That's really cool. And I definitely want to uh, rewatch the, or re, re, good God, reread. Here's a deleted scene from Death Wish 4. I got to reread these soon because this is just awesome stuff in here. A lot of great information, great interviews, you know, really, really good stuff. And these are, I think you can find these pretty, pretty decently priced. There's the DVD cover for Death Wish 5. Again, there's not really a lot of pictures for Death Wish 5. Um, but yeah, and then we have this book. This is the second book. This is Bronson's Loose again. Now this touches more, and this is hardcover, which is awesome. Now this touches more on other Charles Bronson movies, but there is more information about the Death Wish movies in here, uh, which is really cool. But, I mean, the first picture is from Death Wish 4, so there you go. But, um, yeah, so in, in regards to Death Wish, there's an interview with the screenwriter for Death Wish 2, the women from Death Wish 2, the lady that played Charles Bronson's daughter, and then the housemaid, who was Billy Drago's wife. Uh, Robert F. Lyons, he was in Death Wish 2, he was in a bunch of other movies with Charles Bronson. And then the other movies that are covered is Hard Times, which I love, From Noon Till Three, Love and Bullets, Cabo Blanco, Borderline, Ten to Midnight, which is awesome, The Evil That Men Do, which is awesome. Oh, I forgot. Uh, there's an interview with The Giggler from Death Wish 3, Active Vengeance, Murphy's Law, Assassination, Messenger of Death, Kenjite Forbidden Subjects. So it actually has, it between this book and the other book, information about all of Charles Bronson's canon films. So even better. And then The Evil That Men Do, which is a great movie. Uh, yes, Virginia, There's a Santa Claus, which I mentioned. The Sea Wolf, which I mentioned. Donato and Daughter, which I think they changed it to Dead to Rights. That's the TV movie that he did. And then there's an interview with Robert Joy from Death Wish 5. And then there's a couple pages about the Family of Cops movies that Charles Bronson did. The last couple movies that he did before he uh, passed away but again same thing in here you know pretty pretty much the same setup it's a lot of interviews and and research and uh yeah i, I here is a ad for death sentence which never got made um which i guess was going to be death wish 2 at one point another picture of death wish 2 in there picture from 10 to midnight so yeah these books are are great you know if you are a fan of charles bronson if, if you're a fan of these type of movies you know you gotta you gotta grab these books they are so much knowledge in here so much research and uh they are absolutely worth it in my opinion and i cannot wait to sit down and read these again and again and again and again these books rock so yeah unfortunately there is no hardcover for the first one i love hardcover that's just me but hey, if you're one of them reading bitches like i am you got to grab these so there you go but anyway guys i hope that you enjoyed my review of not only death wish 5 the face of death but of all the death wish films thank you for watching as always take care and next up got some more paid requests coming at you a couple couple few different things so we're going to mix it up a little bit here now so take care.